So I have another question. Other than tourniquets, what are the uh, other stuff that bleed tools that people should carry for like head, that neck, and chest uh, wounds, back, groin area? Well, let's, um, okay, so when you look at the stop the bleed, they talk about different ways to stop bleeding and they talk about different regions of the body. Tourniquets are great for arms and legs, so that we've already talked about that, whether we want you to carry those. The other is, is some kind of packing gauze. Um, so people go, oh, I can't afford to buy the Cheeto gauze and all this other stuff. There's studies that's been shown that the, the combat gauze and stuff like that works no better than regular Curlex. I can go to Walmart and buy a roll of Curlex for a dollar, dollar fifty. Well, how do I afford an Israeli dressing or a little lay dressing as for a pressure dressing? If you can't afford those things, go to Walmart and buy an ABD pad. It's a five by nine ABD pad and get an ACE wrap, a four inch ACE wrap. And guess what? You've got a pressure dressing. You should at a minimum carry a tourniquet. You should carry gauze for packing and you should carry a pressure dressing. Those are the minimum things you need to do to stop bleeding. I can improvise a chest seal with a paper, with a uh, plastic bag, uh, and that's using tape and plastic up against the wound on the chest. Um, the wound packing would be your necks and your axilla. You can wound pack arms and legs if you don't have a tourniquet. You can pack the buttocks and you can pack the inguinal areas here and the femoral area here. The abdomen and the chest, you can't pack gauze into because it's just open cavities. So what we do is what we tell people to do is from, you know, from the neck to the breath, you know, bottom of the breath box, you're going to put an occlusive dressing. That can be an AED pad. So you can go to an AED and grab the pads out of it and seal the wound. Um, you know, there's a time when you need to burp those wounds, but that's where you need to take a class and really get that. But always burp it on exhalation. What I mean is when the air starts building up in the chest and the person starts having trouble breathing, when they take a breath in, cover that hole. And when they go to breathe out, open it up and burp it out. And always remember air goes towards the sky. So I've had a bottle of water here, which I do. If you always look, the air is up towards the sky. The liquid's down. If I turn it this way, the air is towards the sky. If I turn it that way, the air is towards the sky. If I turn it that way, the air is towards the sky. And that's what you have to do is always burp the side that's closest to the sky. If you want to really learn how to do that, find someone to give you good instruction on that. I mean, there's so many in instructors out there. It just takes a little bit of a minute of you Googling something and maybe word of mouth to ask and find. You know, you can send comments in to uh, Justin's YouTube channel and, um, you know, um, I give you my website. You can give you some contact information. Maybe he'll put it in the comments. You're more welcome come up and train with us. Um, we'll take care of you and I'll teach you how to do it right. And uh, Justin can do it too. I mean, he's been through my classes and uh, I've seen his skill level. He's really good. And um, he tells you to do something, I mean, do it. I mean, he's, he's a good student. The guy's like a sponge when he's here. He, he soaks up all the information. I mean, he's, it's just the truth, you know, so. Thank you. No, you're welcome. I'm just telling the truth, man.